called High Women's Folly. It's a love, love poem. By the sign of the twisted pusset, under a bloodshot moon, waited high women with his rusted and this trusty steed red room. For a meeting with sexy corsets now, a barmaid extraordinary. He fancied Nell and she knew it well, but she was playing it canny. He approached her by the stable wall and gave her a low whistle. Started, startled, she kneed him in the lower stalls and bent his little pistol. <coughs> Tears ran from his eyes as he bent the <coughs> double and gasped. She said, you're a strange one, Willie. Why do you wear that silly black mask? I'll take it off, Nell, he said. Without a care, he reached to undo the string. Wait, she said. Who knows what's under there? You might be a hideous thing. He said, Nell, I'll undo it little by little if you'll let your corsets fall. Then, she, <clears throat> then you can play with my big pistol against the stable wall. Slowly he dropped his mask and oh, he was a handsome bugger. Her corsets popped in a flurry of whalebone and lace and he couldn't wait to hug her. But as he raised forward to take hold of his Nell, he forgot his pistol was loaded and into his waiting arms limply she fell as his big pistol exploded. She said to him with her very last breath, my instinct I should have trusted. Never believe a man in a silly black na mask with a name like Willie Thrusted. <laughs> with the cop and the hanged poor Willie, a high woman of little fame, and the judge said he was extremely silly because in that course its nail was on the game. Now the moral to all you high women, do protect yourself from detection. Take your pistol out of your pants and point it in a different direction. <laughs> But this is called Gutted. This is, this is a true story, another love story. Uh, it's about a lady I used to go to the gym with and every so often we'd have lunch together. And uh, I said to her, are you coming back for lunch? And she said, no, I'm, I'm going out with another bloke called Nigel. You know, it hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> right, anyway, this is what I wrote. <clears throat> I know my chicken butty isn't really what she wants. She turned me down for Nigel in fancy restaurants. So I'm on to my mother's pride, rejected and alone. Who's this woman I care for? Is her heart made of stone? I even went to Netta for a reconstituted chicken roll. It cost me 49 pence. Doesn't this woman have a soul? <laughs> Along with me butty, I dip the crust in me cup of soup. I know she's eating langoustine and, and tasting bouffon croute. But I simply can't be bitter, for it's all <clears throat> well, that's not what I am. So I'll buy some skeleton's buns, meat paste and roast ham. Tomatoes, lettuce and some posh cottage cheese and get some fancy napkins to cover her lovely knees. But I just sit here munching, worshipping from afar. Well, I'm no competition, I've got no je ne sais quoi. And I'm really not jealous, and my heart it will not burn. Because, you see, I brought my chicken roll on sale or return. Thank you very much. <laughs>